Okay, so um, continuing on our, our backdoor attack theme, um, uh, this paper is looking at time series. So this is work in, in conjunction with um, Yujing Zhang, a PhD student, uh, Xingjun Ma from Fudan, and Sarah Irfani, um, and myself from the University of Melbourne. So looking at backdoors for, for time series, and as the previous, previous um, talk has, has highlighted, backdoor attacks, they're out there. They're a, they're a threat that people are talking about and, and, and worrying about. And the whole idea being that the um, adversary can control the model's behavior in some way by um, injecting a trigger um, into, into the model. And lots and lots of uh, work but, um, for the image, the image context. Uh, time series data, um, you know what it is, sequence of observations over time. It can be univariate, it can be multivariate. Um, one of the things about time series is that you know, there's all kinds of time series. Um, there's uh, stock prices, there's, there's ECGs, there's, there's sensor measurements, they're, they're very, very diverse um, type, type of data. And again, just to quickly recap, uh, backdoor attacks, the, the idea being that looking at the figure at the top, you've got a clean sample, you put it into the backdoor classifier, it gives it hopefully gives the right answer, the ground truth. Whereas if you give it a, a poison sample, it will it will predict consistently predict the wrong uh, the wrong class. And the way people traditionally measure the the performance is you you want your your, your attacks to be uh, had a high success rate. So often make the model do the uh, the thing you want it to do. Um, but you want the model to have high clean accuracy, so it should perform well um, for the un untargeted inputs and stealthiness as well. So the pattern should be um, stealthy or, or invisible or hard for humans to, to, to see. And this is just, again, the, the image context example, you've got, a, you've got a clean input on the left, then the classic backdoor method for images, bad nets, puts a, a pattern down the bottom right there. Um, and if the image has this, this, this trigger or this pattern, uh, the model will predict the wrong class. It might predict a four instead of a seven. Lots of follow-up work, things such as invisible patterns. So this invisible um, pattern here, you can't really see it so well, but again, it controls the model to predict predict the wrong class and and also sample specific patterns that change according to the to the sample that's that's input. So time series. Um, as I've said, lots of lots of um, work for the for the image image context. Um, somewhat unclear whether um, just taking the image based methods and applying them to time series is is going to work um, effectively because as I've mentioned time series are, 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 are very diverse and there's different sorts of generative mechanisms underlying different types of types of time series so you you wouldn't necessarily expect a, a fixed sort of trigger to to work well for stock prices and also for ECG heart rate monitoring and at the same time you we, again, we want to achieve stealthiness and effectiveness. So the contributions from, from, from this paper, we propose a backdoor attack for, for time series. It's, it's sample specific. So according to the sample, the, the trigger will be, will, will be different. It's, it's stealthy. So I'll show you a picture of a time series and you won't be able to tell visually whether it has the, the trigger and it has these other nice sorts of things in terms of success rate attack success rate, clean accuracy, and so forth. We also show it's possible to extend this to a what's called a universal backdoor attack that I'll talk about as well. Um, related work, I won't have time for that, but there is a little bit of work on backdoors for, uh, for, for time series, um, three, three, three works. Um, the way we approached um, the baseline attacks for our, for our work, we, we, we had a couple of na fairly naive um, baselines. Um, there was the, the vanilla backdoor. So the idea is that you've got an original signal on the left, a vanilla, vanilla backdoor just inserts this pattern at the beginning of the time series. You, know, you, can, really, you can see it, it's quite, quite obvious, um, or it inserts it at a, a random position in the, in the time series. So that sort of rectangular block is the, is the trigger, if you like. Very naive, um, the vanilla backdoor. And there's also another variant we, we tested it as a baseline, um, static noise. 
So there's a there's a type of noise called called power line noise, and you can see on the far right that you add power line noise, it makes the the timer series wiggle wiggle a little bit. Um, you can see it's a little bit jagged and and bumpy. That's because uh, power line noise has been been added. So two two baselines adding this fixed rectangular vanilla back door or adding this special type of noise and you know we wanted to improve on 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 these uh these as as baselines the the sorts of challenges i guess um for time series versus 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 images where um looking at a regime where we, we've got time series and you know often they're univariate but they could be multivariate and have a few dimensions but they probably won't have 100, 100 dimensions for each time point and again we're in the regime where there's you know maybe not too many time points sort of hundreds maybe up to a thousand two thousand but not a million not not a hundred thousand um time series i guess a difference from images is that the, the scale is there isn't really a specified range for all, all types of time series it's going to depend on you know whether you're looking at earthquakes or, or haptics or stock prices whatever so you need to be able to deal with that when you insert the trigger um, and I guess time series repetitions are, are, are another feature of time series. So if you're going to put a trigger into a time series and a time series repeating itself, repeating itself, you know, do you have to repeat the trigger for every repetition in the time series? And I guess another consideration also is you any trigger or any modification one makes to the time series, you you, you need to respect the the smoothness of the time series to make it to make it stealthy. So our the, the intuition behind our approach it's a it's a generative approach so generative adversarial networks we're all familiar with them a schematic of of our approach is up the top there the idea being that you you take a clean input you pass it through a a generator um, that that adds a, a adds a trigger to it and you end up with a poison sample and then these poison samples get combined with the clean samples and a classifier is is trained and we use a, a, a standard cross entropy loss to, to, to measure the, the, the quality. So in a little bit more detail, the idea being that um, we, we pass our clean input in, we're trying to optimize this generator to, to modify the time series in, in some way. And we're using about 10% of the, the, the data as a, as a sort of a poisoning, uh, poisoning percentage. And our loss at the end of the day is for the poison samples. We want we want um, the classifier to predict the the target class, you know, the wrong class. And for the clean samples, we want the the, the classifier to predict the, the the true the true class. Um, there's there's the next question is the the threat models, um, and there's a couple of couple of threat models just to um, give you the idea. Um, our, our, our method is called TSBA, time series backdoor attack. And there's, there's two variants, A and B. Um, the first variant, TSBA, the idea being is that um, we're the adversary, we have full access to the training. Um, we produce a model and we, uh, we give, it to the, uh, give it to the victim and the victim uses our, our pre-trained pre model. Um, so that's, that's one, one threat model. The other threat model we looked at is a slightly weaker one where um, we generate some poison samples and they're accidentally collected by the victim. Um, we can only poison you know, maybe up to 10%, 5% of the training data. The victim collects this data and then trains their own, their, their own model. So a little bit, little bit more detail. This is, this is the sort of the flow of, of, of how our approach works. Um, the, the, the first point is we, we, we've got a classifier and a generator. We're going to train them simultaneously. So we warm start the, the classifier, maybe train it for about 20, 20 epochs with clean, clean training data. Then we, 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 we take out um, about 10% of the training data set, and this is going to be what we, what we poison. And then step three is a simultaneous training of the, the generator and the, the classifier. So um, for the generator, we're trying to minimize um, the loss of the, the, the poison samples towards the target class and the classifier minimize the loss towards the, towards the true class. 
So I'll, I'll, I'll show, you, show, show you a few experiments to give you a bit of an idea about the, the, the kind of ways we, we evaluate this and there's standard archives for, for, for time, series, um, time series classification. There's the univariate, um, there's, the, there's the multivariate. Um, it's a big table, but if you just look over on the, on the right, our, our generative approach, you can see it's, it's ASR, it's a tax success rate is close to, to 100%. So every every almost every poison sample it, it, it generates is is successful in fooling fooling the model um, to predict the the, the target the, the target class and the clean accuracy the, the CA the CA column is is pretty reasonable it's pretty pretty close to the uh, the, the the true uh, the, the the true clean accuracy without any poison poison samples and. The, the second threat model, it's a bit more difficult. Things drop a little bit, but it's still it, it's still pretty high, um, either in the the eighties or nineties for the attack attack success ratio and pretty high clean accuracy. So overall, quite effective on these these metrics. Here's a couple of um, of examples of time series. So here's a clean signal over on the the left here. Um, we apply our our back door to it. The back door signal, and you look at that, and you can't you can't see the back door. Um, it's it's imperceptible. Um, you might you might think, well, what if I have a look in the frequency domain? Well, again, down the bottom left, that's the 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 frequency spectrum of the clean signal, and then the frequency spectrum of the the back door signal. Again, it's it's hard to hard to see a difference. Um, we went we went and computed some some um, root mean square values for how much the, the signal had changed and average sort of two 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 percent so about two percent change in in amplitude um, on average and as we can see it's pretty much imperceptible um, and that's just a, another example of the same the same sort of thing um, when we submitted the paper some of the referees suggested well that's good. That's all good. But why don't you apply some of the the defences from the image context? See them. See whether they work on um, stopping stopping this this backdoor attack for time series. So we did that. Um, the story is that the existing defences for 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 image backdoors work quite well at stopping our our naive baselines, vanilla and static noise, but they don't work so well for stopping our our proposed attack. So they only reduce. Um, reduce the success rate by you know one percent, five percent, that that type of thing. We also showed in the paper that it's um, possible to extend this concept to what we call a, a universal trigger chip trigger generator. So the idea being that every time you you get a new time series data set, you don't necessarily want to train the generator from scratch to to poison samples. Um, so what this universal trigger generator does is um, it's it's a generator that can generate a, a a trigger for any any type of time series that you that you give it, and the way it works is 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 actually quite simple. We we gather lots of different time series together, we merge them all together, and then we sort of randomly sample different different time series, different target classes, and then use our our time series backdoor backdoor attack. At the end of the day, um, we end up with a generator. And any new time series that comes along from anywhere, we can apply our generator to it, put a pattern onto it, and um, do do the backdoor attack. And again, you can you can sort of measure the measure the performance of this universal backdoor attack. And the story is it's it's actually pretty close to um, uh, the, the the data set specific attacks. So to to wrap up then. Um, We've we've shown for the time series domain um, we can we can craft backdoor attacks in a in a generative way. They're they're stealthy. They've got high success rate, uh, um, um, and they don't have much effect on the clean accuracy. Uh, some things to maybe maybe ponder on. I've got the question here. Uh, you know, is it disturbing that it's possible to insert backdoors into into time series? Well, maybe not given this this particular audience, but are there are, are there real world implications here? Um, I'm not sure uh, uh, whether there's any examples yet. I'd be interested to know. Um, something I've sort of scratched my head about 
why isn't there much work on backdoors for time series compared to images? I'm not completely sure about that. Um, and then the follow on question is, do we, do we actually need new methods for attacking time series versus images? Um, in what ways are they really different? And conversely, the defense, um, do we really need specialized defenses for time series and backdoors? I'll finish there.